Uh, you gotta watch me in the foul language. Is your mouth? Is your um, mic? Oh, you got your good mic. You got your solid mic. Going? Test, test, test. Oh, I see us. Hey. I hey. Think yeah, I get just got an ad popped up. <laughs> okay. Skip ad. Yeah, we're live. We are live. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, this is the board game geek live Q and A for uh, BGG events. And I'm Aldi, also uh, all known as Scott uh, Alden, and uh, this is Jeff Anderson. I'm Jeff, also yourself, known as. Jeff? Yeah. I'm I'm also known as Captain Quicks. Uh, my wife Christine runs the BGG store with a lot of help, and uh, with her help and John and Laney and everybody else, I run all the BGG events. Cool. So we have sort of a line up here i guess we have the pictures of the top we're going to talk about bgg spring first then bgg at sea bgg con and if you have questions throw them in the chat uh let's just check is there anybody in the chat yet uh no maybe it just ticked up from nine people to 13 okay, people cool. watching uh how's the sound everybody uh, assuming someone's in the chat room if you're not in the chat room you can click on the video or click on the um Actually, I don't think I've embedded this on BGG. So technically, if you're watching it, you're watching it on on uh, Twitch. Sound is good. And someone's right. watching from work. They're awesome. totally okay. not watching from work. Totally not watching. Of course. Cool. I right. am doing this from work. So let's talk about BGG Spring first. BGG Spring 2018. 2018. That's Go ahead, right. Take it over, Jeff. 2018. Um, we've already started our committee meetings, and we are excited to open it up for registration sometime this week. Um, I'm waiting on the link from the hotel to get the room block open. I requested that uh, last week. It should come in sometime this week. Get that opened where, up. And where we'll is that hotel? What hotel would that be, Jeff? It is at the uh, Hyatt Regency DFW Airport, where it has been now. This will be, is this the third year for spring or the fourth no, year? I think it's... <laughs> Good question. I think it's the This fourth. will be the fourth year for yeah. spring. Okay. Because our first year we had 500 people. Second year was 1,000. Right. 2017 was 1,200. We're looking somewhere right? around yeah. 1,500 for uh, for spring next year. Yeah, so the size rec comparisons to people who have not or to have been to BGG cons over the year last year was about as big as BGG 20 at the old Weston. Do you remember yes. at the West was that 2000 2010 and 2011 11 was those were our last two years there. People. so that's the size yeah. of it a comfortable group um, I had a great time it's very laid back compared to BGG con um, you got no problem getting in ga whatever game you want to get in it's a little less competition for the new games because there aren't any. Uh, well, technically, we have all the stuff from Essen from six months earlier, 180 days ago. Essen, right. um, they're right on the 180-day marks of the year part. And um, all those games are still here. Probably only about half of them may be in, the Amer in America at that point, like imported or republished or whatever. So if you missed something out of the... Um, probably 1,000 games coming out at Essen. We will have most of those at the BGG library. Um, yep. You want to talk about our library a little bit? Uh, our library is 5,000 board games or so that we bring. Uh, it's basically a full semi truck load that I bring into smaller trucks. And uh, it's the best convention board game library that I know of. Um, I, I, it's just an impressive sight to be in this. 2500 square foot room that is completely ringed around with shelves of board games um, the other thing we have at bgg spring is instead of our traditional hot games room we've got the spiel drs nominees um kind we of hope. timed have they committed for 2018 yet we don't know that for sure but they probably will they probably will and i talked with them at 2017 with the basically nod of the head that they intend to keep on coming as long as the timing continues to work out. We have, I haven't set an explicit email about, okay, these are our dates next year, but I believe, uh, I, I don't have any reason to think they won't be coming back. And the timing just works out perfectly because it's right after they've announced 
the finalists for all three categories. awards, yeah. all three categories, but you don't have any of the winners yet. So you get to play all three finalists for all three awards and, uh, and then place teach, your bets. You will have, yes. you will have a Spiel des Jahres judge teach you the game, which is kind of fascinating. Um, and they're all very approachable and super nice. And they'll speak English perfectly. Oh yes. Um, and better than great. some of us. Better do. than <laughs> us. Yes. Um, <laughs> when is the dates for BGG spring 2018, Jeff? BGG spring 2018 and you're going to ask that. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'll divert for a it's, second while you're looking that up. Oh, we have our links in the chat if you uh, type in uh, ha- uh, Bang Events, which I just did in the chat, you can see. Um, and so far, we've got the cruise and the BGG um, at sea uh, thread up there, and also the BGG Prime. Spring is website is still not correct yet. Any chance on those dates yet, Jeff? Those dates are May 25th through 28th, 2018. And so the Monday is the 28th? The, the Monday is the 28th. Here in the U.S., we have a holiday called Memorial Day, which is always the last Monday in May. And we target BGG Spring to always fall on that weekend. So right. the last day of the convention will be Memorial Day, and that right. is May 28th. And it starts on Friday a.m.? 10 a.m.? Friday, 10 a.m. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, you know... Gaming on Thursday night happens. We are there in the hotel Thursday night, and there are other people in the hotel, potentially. So gaming early is a kind of a freebie for the con. We don't, you know, you don't get to charge for that. And there are public spaces to play in. Yes, um, you, you have I'm to play truth, your... Right? You are completely speaking the truth. There is a pre-gaming that happens. You have to bring your own games. Our right. library is not available yet until we open on Friday morning. But uh, we're always looking for help to get the convention up and running. And so if you feel like volunteering, you can help us set things up on Thursday afternoon right. or evening. But there's also plenty of people there that check in uh, the night before so they can get in line first thing in the morning, check into the hotel and, and go play a game somewhere. Um, if you're flying in, make sure to fly into DFW, not love DFW, DFW, DFW. Uh, because if Although you there love, is, it's about a 30 minute uh, taxi ride for you. So what are you saying? I've heard the light rail goes between the two now. Okay. Don't, I don't know that for sure. Yeah. I've uh, never ridden it myself. DFW but, uh, is the, at the airport, they will, the hotel is inside the airport. Um, Security, not security. The uh, what do you call that the gate. It's in, it, it, the toll gate. The, the toll. The yeah. toll booth. So if you fly into DFW, you can land and take a shuttle directly to the hotel. It take five minutes, or you can yes. walk. If you're at Terminal C, I believe Terminal C. Terminal C. It's only been C whatever. T- Ten years, so I think I would know this by now. Um, Terminal C. You can just actually like walk across. There's like a path. It's not yep. like easy. It's not super easy, but it's it can be done. You're walking through a parking garage. I've actually done it more than once. Right. Um, you walk um, from your straight to the hotel. If you're driving in, parking is free in the uh, airport. So that's another question a lot of people always have. Um, well, let's say that it's validated because you will right. have to, right. you'll have to take a ticket and then the hotel will validate it for you. Yep. Any questions in the chat about BGD Spring 2018? Oh, Jeff, I have a question. Yes. What's the price? What is the price? Yeah. The price is the same price as it was last year, uh, $75 for uh, adult and $65 for uh, if you're a veteran or active duty of any military service. Uh, Because it's Memorial Day weekend, we offer a discount for those who have served or are serving in the military. Mm -hmm. And it is Kid friendly. We should probably talk about that real briefly. Uh, this is an all ages show. I don't know if it's yes. technically kid friendly. Well, I don't it's know if I not... want to go out that far and say it's kid friendly. It's an all ages show. Children are allowed to come to BGG Con Spring. I would say it is not designed for kids. No, absolutely the not. Kids are welcome to be there. Correct. It's you know gamers in training. You know gamers with kids, uh, and there is a kids price. Uh, Four to eleven is fifty five dollars. Okay. Uh, now there, as soon as we open registration sometime this week, there will be an early bird discount. If you get your tickets, get your badges before, I think we said, uh, December 1st, uh, it'll be $10 off of all those prices I just gave you. What a great deal. 
Oh. <laughs> anyway, I have a good time at spring. It's a lot less um, hectic, I guess is the word, than BGGCon fall in the fall. So. Yeah, it's um, it's a really good time. It's, it's a different show. It's not the same as BGGCon. So if you well, can come and visit us, I know there's a lot of going on on Memorial Day weekend. We would love to have you. And uh, come say hello. Um, visit Lincoln and Nikki from Game Night. They'll be there. Um, yeah, I have some like minor celebrities. <laughs> okay. Oh, they're they're major, they're major celebrities, celebrities like, now. Yeah. Yes. YouTube celebrities. Okay. They Moving they on. have been asked for autographs. So, so do we that have any other questions from the chat? Um, um let's drops. see. I'm looking through the chat here. We've got a lot of a, a handful of people here. I don't see any questions specific to spring. Uh, Jeremy. Rhodes asks if we anticipate having to upgrade your storage for the library with future growth. Uh, so that's a great question, not tied to spring specifically, but yes, we will be upgrading the library as we, we don't need to for spring. It's there's, you know, there's three games a person for spring. Um, but in the fall, as we grow the fall, uh, into a new location that we'll talk about in a little bit, we are expecting to grow our library as well. Right. Okay. Uh, but that'll be at the very end of the stream where we talk about 2020? No, 2019. 2019 will Make be sure our... Make sure get the right dates there. 2019. Yes. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. Um, any other question about spring? Can you think of anything, Jeff? We forget anything? We probably forgot something. This is your it's, chance. This you is know, the chance for the stream to catch up and ask us a yeah. question in the chat. If there is any questions about spring. Right, because that'll lag a little bit. Yeah. Uh, while we're waiting for them to catch up, uh, spring, I think of, it's got its own feel now. It's its own event, but it's still just BGG Con. Um, it's a lot of open gaming. Um, there are a few scheduled events. Poker is still, is that still happening? Poker is still a Probably. thing. Poker is a thing. Uh, we have a flea market. We have events. We've had some game shows put on by different exhibitors. Um, yeah, we had the uh, Wits and Wagers Vegas last year, which I had a great time playing. Yeah, and that was Run by almost Bruce, Bruce Vogue. I think his name is. Bruce, yeah, I don't know Vogue. if that was exclusive, was but they great. were doing they were doing play testing, yeah. or it hadn't even been released yet, and yeah. we were play testing it there. Yeah, that was super fun. Um, one of the gentlemen in my group, we added in um, the captain. If anybody knows the captain from Dallas. He's a quite the character, and he knew almost the answer to every single question, except my stepmother talked him out of every answer, every single question, and we lost. <laughs> Sorry, Captain. Uh, throwing your stepmother under the bus. I hope she's not watching. It was great. It was so hilarious. We would just be like, because she would basically give a great response to like why the why she thought the answer was a different number. <laughs> you play wits and wagers. All you do is write a number on a card. And right, that's the answer. Right. So you're, and it's like closest to prices right style without going over. Um, and and the captain was like, he was so close on every single. Like he was almost like exactly right on every single one. And we had should have just listened to him the whole night. Okay, I guess yep. there's no questions in chat. Uh, nothing moving about on. spring. It looks like. So we're moving on to BG at C. I'll let you take over this since there's like a specific order to these. So. BGG at C, yes. Um, we've done three gaming cruises now, uh, one per year. And we, at the first of this year, announced that next summer we would be going to Alaska. And it was incredibly popular and sold out our first cruise to sell out, and it sold out in less than a week. And uh, so we added a second week. We added a few rooms to the first week, but we we decided that we weren't going to um, just let it grow without bounds. We want to keep it kind of a social, kind of an intimate experience, everybody playing together. So it is space limited next year, next summer, June 22nd through the 29th or June uh, 29th through uh, July 6th. And I should say and or, because we do have some people coming to both weeks. Right. So just to uh, clarify, we're going back to back to Alaska. Week yes. one, first date, you said. Week two, second date. Um, and it's the exact same itinerary exact same. both weeks. 
So if you're there both weeks, you'll get to do two different groups of shore excursions at the exact same ports. And uh, the exciting thing is Christine and I just went on a preview of this cruise a week ago. Right. So the, uh, I guess two weeks ago now. Well, it basically it was the first week of September, September 1st or September 8th. How was the weather? The weather actually was very good except Skagway. Um, What's Skagway, dur- Jeff? Never heard of it. Skagway <laughs> is one of the ports that we go to. Oh, it's okay. an old mining town. Right. And uh, that day, it's a very small port town. It's actually not your traditional port town. If you've ever cruised the Caribbean or, or cruised somewhere else, you know, you get off the ship and once you get outside the gate, there's, you know, streets of jewelry stores and t-shirt shops. Skagway is not like that at all. You just come in at a, at a mining town. And the big draw in Skagway is to take a narrow gauge railroad up to White Pass, up into Canada. And mm-hmm. you can actually continue on all the way up to the Yukon if you want. We're there for a good, we're in Skagway probably 12, 14 hours, so if what I does remember that mean? right. We're in Skagway. So we land, we, we po- land at the port. We land at the port right. at about oh, seven or eight in the morning. Can you get off the ship right at that point? You can get off the ship right then. Um, you know, there's a line to get off the ship unless you've got some shore excursion where you have to. Right. But uh, you get off the ship right then. And then if you're going on the train ride, which is kind of one of the main shore excursions there. It's not the only one, but it's kind of the premier one. The train is right at the dock. You actually walk off the ship about 100 yards and then you're on the train. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, get and the bus that, to something, and then yeah. get off the bus. Okay. Uh, time out one sec. Are we gonna do team yep. events at spring this time? Do we have team oriented events? Team oriented team, events. Team, at team, spring. Double, T double oh, N. Oh, yeah. Like okay. Sixteen. Yes, we do have. We've always done like special times set aside for teens to do. Artemis and things like that. We have talked about a teen meetup. We did one for the first year this year, and I and we'll do that again so the teens can get to know each other. Um, if someone yeah. is very interested in arranging a team, te- see, keep saying team, teen event, give us a ring, like call us or write to BGG Con. Actually, by calling, I mean email, and that would be BGG Con, <laughs> BGG Con at boardgamegeek.com and pitch yep. an idea. And if you want to run with it, We'll probably allow it, right? Yeah, we, we're generally, yeah, if it's, you're it's willing kind of to run a, it, we're, we're yeah. willing to let you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, that's generally our philosophy, as long as the it's... the way things go with BGG. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, you want to bring up the pictures? So, yeah, yeah, okay. let's do that. I have All some right. more to say about the train ride, but we'll do that when we're actually looking at the picture of the train ride. Okay. So, so, so I took some pictures from our week there, and I'll kind of just talk through how the week goes. Uh, this That's is, not, that doesn't look good. Hold on. Let me fix it. Yeah. This is my dorky self and my beautiful wife. Um, wow. That's a nice picture, Jeff. <laughs> this is iPhone selfie quality here. Uh, Aldi is the photographer. I am not, uh, I do not have a oh. great camera at all. So this is my iPhone six. Yeah. I think that's okay. centered. Where, where are you oh, standing but, it from? Is that a glacier? We are in standing in front of the Mendenhall Glacier. So this is our very first port, Juneau. Um, So backing up, oh, I I took another picture I forgot to send you. I actually tweeted that picture. Um, I took a picture at the Chihuly Glass and Gardens. Yeah, Yeah, check the Twitter, BGG. Check my Twitter or BGG. Your your Twitter, uh, Captain Quicks. At Captain Quicks or at BGGC, I think uh, you'll see it there. But at Captain Quicks, there's a beautiful, um, in Seattle, there's the Space Needle, obviously, and right at the base of it, there's these beautiful glass sculptures. Uh, so right, I took so a picture there. We did early, that. You can go to that. You come in early. You can also do it. Uh, Royal Caribbean has an excursion where you get off the ship, they'll take you there, and then take you straight to the airport. Yeah. So you get so on the ship, an- and they take you off the ship. Yes, when when on your day to go back home, if you fly out later in the day, oh, I see. Uh, 
you have time to spend in Seattle because you really you're off. See it at night. Um, we saw it in the day, but okay. Because I mean, I there is one. Saw, okay, I thought there was night pictures, but well, there's a there's an interior and an exterior picture. The interior picture was a room that was all in black and just the glass was lighted up. Okay. Um. So there's lots of things to do in Seattle. We did the, uh, the Space Needle and the Gardens and Glass in the morning before we got on the ship. And then when we came back home, I went over, if you know me, I like airplanes. I went over to the Boeing Flight Museum before we flew so home. you're wearing a Vans aircraft hat in this picture? Not exact. Well, okay. I like hey, uh, So what, how do you do this? What is this thing? This is a, an excursion, right? Like, so this, this what well, yeah. we're looking at the picture right here now, yep. this is now we've made it to Juno, which is um, after a day of playing board games all day on Saturday, we got, we got on the ship Friday out of Seattle. Saturday, we're playing board games all day. Sunday at around noon, you get into Juno. And it's really cool because all morning long, as you're sailing up these fjords and canyons to get to Juno, it was, you know, we kind of went through a fog bank and then it cleared up. It was beautiful, uh, very scenic. And we get to Juno. So this is a shore excursion in Juno. They have many different shore excursions. You can take a helicopter ride out to a glacier, you can go whale watching. Um, we did the shore excursion that we have arranged private tours for board game geeks on all the shore excursions we're going to talk about here. So this first one, you spend a little bit about an hour at the Mendenhall Glacier. It's a national park. Uh, there's some hiking trails that go back through the forest that kind of show you how the glacier has receded. The glacier has been receding since about 1650 or 1740. They gave me a date. I can't remember what it is. And it has now receded back up the, the canyon to where you see it right now. Um, you don't actually get to go up to and touch the glacier. Uh, I believe if you look in the picture over to the right, there's a waterfall. That other little white thing is a waterfall. I think there's a hike over to that waterfall. There's yeah, right over there. Enough. <laughs> yep. Thank you. I don't have a mouse to point right. that out. Um, and we, there was, you know, there was a nature talk by a uh, U.S. Forest Service ranger talked about her experience going into the glacier and where glaciers come from and and all that. It's it's a very scenic uh, way to go. It's is that very like about a four scenic. hour excursion. Is it? Is it? On yeah, hour? it's about it's about three and a half four hours. Okay. So you could basically do this excursion, then come back on the boat and play games the rest of the day. Easily. Or yes. is there other things to do after this, like in the area? Well, yeah. Well, this excursion actually has two parts. Okay. So the first so part go on the is next you picture? go. Yeah, go feels to the next like, picture. This feels like family's ledger. Yeah. Okay, there's water. <laughs> um, that yeah, so yep. go a couple of pictures ahead and then we'll back up to this one. Keep going. I, I took one more. Yes. That one. So um, the other half of this excursion is a free dinner, a buffet dinner. Oh. Um, included in that's the, included in, in the, the price, price of the excursion you get back on a bus and they take you over to this place you can kind of see it um there's a guy playing live music over there on the right hand side it's again i'm a horrible photographer but you know he's playing dan fogelberg and john denver tunes on a guitar and and it's kind of nice and it's a buffet like that. yeah it's a buffet dinner with, uh, there's chicken, there's uh, side dishes, and then there's freshly grilled salmon. Um, if you, so go back a couple of pictures. So at this area, this is all in the same place. So at where you're having the dinner, they have a stream where this is salmon going up the stream in the water. And then there's a, a waterfall up at the top. Um, that that's the next picture. There's also an old mine shaft that's right there. You can pan for gold. Uh, it's it's fun for kids to see. Um, and then you've got this salmon dinner where you um, you've got free water, lemonade. They will charge you for beer or soda, I believe. Is that part um, of this part as well? Yeah, this is it right here. So this okay. is where they're grilling the salmon. Okay. Um, I you might can, even eat salmon for once. I've yeah. Oh, salmon, it's good. But, uh, I'll give it a go. I had it's salmon fresh and grilled. Probably is great. I had salmon probably four different ways on this okay. cruise. <laughs> it's the salmon cruise. 
I had it grilled. I had it raw at the sushi place. I had it uh, a fillet, and then at our last shore excursion, I had it candied, almost like jerky. Okay, disgusting. But yeah, we'll get okay. to that. Oh, oh okay. Good. So ready to move on? Move on. Okay, so that's Juno. That's Sunday. Uh, we leave Juno about nine p.m. Okay. Monday. This is this is Skagway, and Skagway. I was telling you the train that's right at the the cruise port. Uh, it's a narrow gauge railroad, um, about 20, 25 miles up the side of the mountain. Okay. It's about, uh, an hour, hour and a half each way. So you can, it's a good three hours. Mm-hmm. You're on the train and up and, and back. Yeah. Yeah. Three and a half. Okay. And on this excursion, um, I didn't really take any pictures of the, the, um, train car that we were in uh it's pretty standard train car looking out the window you flip the seats over when the train you know they you get to the top up in canada they don't let you off the train because you're in canada and you didn't bring your passport and there's nothing there but a big lake and some flagpoles uh they move the engines around to the other end of the train and you start going right back down and oh, okay. you, flip the, you flip the seats over. So you're so, facing the other direction when you come, yeah, come back? Yeah, you're always facing forward. Is this the one and with the, um, the the two-way seats and the tables between them? For us, yes, exactly. Okay. We have custom train cars for our group that have tables right. in between the seats. And so we have set up so that you can actually play a game while you're going up the side of the mountain and back. Um, and if you're... To be honest, one side of the train is a lot more scenic than the other. Uh, so if you're going, when you're going up, you want to be on the left-hand side because you're generally hugging the mountain up on the right-hand side. They're both very scenic, but a lot of the open vista views are out the left side. When you get to the top, everybody you know gets up and switches sides so that if you were going up the mountain side on the way up, you'll be going down on the other side. So you have the same view. Uh, But yes, we have uh, tables for games and um, it's, this was the day where it was cold and rainy and foggy. Um, I did this once before about 12 years ago and the view was just phenomenal. Uh, Clear blue skies everywhere. And some of the best pictures I've ever, not that I've taken good pictures but just the best views i've ever seen yeah this is an okay Uh, picture i can see christine's reflection but that's (laughs) fine yeah (laughs) well it gives it gets the idea uh, if you want to go what what's the actual title of the excursion um it is on our uh let me pull up it's on it's on the bgg front page uh this is the skagway it's the white pass Railroad okay. custom short excursion. All right, moving on. Next one. Yep. Oh, that looks like it's from the train. Uh, that is from the train. You oh, go okay. over these really narrow bridges. In some cases, you know, you're hundreds of feet up in the air over a rickety wooden bridge oh, on great. a big, yeah, heavy metal railroad oh, train. It went too far. Okay. Um, next one. Yeah. So this next one is uh, so Skagway That's was a nice Monday. Picture, Jeff. Thank you. That's very nice. That's off the front of the ship. Uh, this is Tuesday morning where we are going up what's called the Tracy Arm Fjord uh, to see a glacier up at the end of the fjord. And um, it was beautiful. This was right after my morning run. I, I was working out in the exercise room. And uh, as the sun came up, it was just a beautiful view. Um, there's a series of two or three pictures here kind of all in the same thing this is uh, i did a panorama shot here of the area you can see that fog bank in the distance that fog bank is actually covering where we want to go okay and so um we go up a different uh fjord uh this here is in in the near view you have some dumb island that's really the name of it and up behind it is some dumb glacier. I think the next picture is a better shot of the glacier. Yeah, that, yeah. there's some dumb glacier. There's sort of a glacier there. Yeah. Um, so depending on the weather, the fog, the ice, 
you we may or may not be able to get all the way up to the end of the fjord to see a glacier more up close. And on this day, th- between the fog and the ice, we couldn't get much closer than this. But uh, still, it was very beautiful. And yeah. we sailed around for a bit in there. Um, and then the next day, so that day, that Tuesday, it on the itinerary, it shows Tracy Arm Fjords and Glaciers. We're, it's a day that we're at sea. We never get off the ship. We're just viewing the glaciers from, from, the, from the ship. And just beautiful, both sides of the ship, you've got these gorgeous views of these uh, fjords. Is this and where mountains. you see the, the ice falling? Yes, the calving. You would see that calving, on that this called? day. It's called calving, calving. yeah, when, when the ice falls off of a glacier. Okay. Um, the previous Alaskan cruise Christine and I took 12 years ago was on Princess, and we got into Glacier Bay, and we got right up and close with a with a glacier there. Unfortunately, Royal Caribbean doesn't have the license that they need. need. That. There's, yeah, there's only a few cruise lines that are like grandfathered in to be able to go into uh, certain areas. Okay. But you, you still got great views here. Um, but if you don't care about the view, this is a day where we're playing games all day long. And uh, the next day, we're playing games all day long as well. Um, we got... Yeah, two days at sea, Tuesday or uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. We Christine and I got a little bit of special treatment because we were effectively travel agents on a preview cruise, and so we got some behind-the-scenes tours of the galley area. Uh, so this is some food prep going on. We got to see what the galleys looked like, and we also got invited to the captain's table very unexpectedly. But that was a that was a nice treat. Um, not something we're offering to everybody on, uh, the BGG cruise. There's no way we could do that, <laughs> but it was just, it was kind of a, a fun and unexpected treat for us. Anybody curious, uh, happy to talk about that experience in more depth, uh, later, because it was an out of world experience for, for somebody like us. We were very out of our depth there. We were next to, if you, it's a hard to see on that picture in yeah, the I middle, to go, it's kind of hard. The middle guy in white is the hotel director. We are just to his left, so to the right right there. And if you continue around the circle is a couple that is uh, platinum, no, pinnacle level. They have sailed on at least 100 Royal Caribbean cruises. They've sailed something like 11 or 1,200 nights on board a ship. And then the other couple on the other side has sailed like 1,500 and uh, so, you know, they were That's a very experienced. lot of cruising. Yes, they were. Both of them were like three weeks back to back. And one of them was like five weeks back to back to back to back. They were on board that ship for over a month. A whole different Impressive. lifestyle. But hey, uh, so yeah, Thursday. It, why yeah, why not? <laughs> and want to. Uh, Thursday is the Victoria, British Columbia. And our shore excursion here is the Bouchard Gardens, which is a Canadian national uh, heritage site, amazingly beautiful flower garden area. What you're looking at right now used to be a quarry. And uh, so back in early 1900s, some rich guy whose last name was Bouchard, Bouchard, um, made his money, you know, quarrying rock and his wife, you know, when, when the quarry was played out, she wanted to turn it into a flower garden. And so that's where Butchart Gardens came from. So that used to be a, a rock quarry. And now there are acres and acres of gardens. There's four or five main garden areas, Japanese gardens and hanging gardens. And this area here that I think it was called the Ball Garden. I can't remember. I I shouldn't say because I can't remember what it was. But just beautiful, gorgeous, and a rose garden area. So you've got um, lots of flowers. I was I was pretty proud of uh, this picture here. You know, I kind of like that. Um, So you get about an hour or so, an hour and a half, to wander through all the gardens, and then we have set up just for us a custom picnic. They have a tea service there. You can do a high tea if you want. They have a restaurant. 
we have booked a gourmet picnic out on the grass on these picnic tables here uh, that's over by the the you know the gift shop area the museum area uh, so those tables there from a distance those will be reserved just for our group assuming we you know get a large enough group they do this short excursion for other people as well but we will probably fill up such that we get all the tables and everybody else will just be on you know grass uh, picnic bat, but they bring over, you know, full size picnic baskets and you pull your meal out of it. So you're uh, talking about these tables here in front yeah. or these tables yeah. up here? No, the, the red and white checkered okay. Gingham, uh, okay. picnic tables there. Um, if it rains, we, we move into another area that's enclosed, but it was, it was gorgeous that day. It was beautiful. It was warm. It was probably 85 degrees. Um, you asked about the weather in general. Right. I never put on a jacket unless I was going up outside, up on deck at like 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Or in Skagway, we wore jackets. But everywhere else, it was short sleeve weather. Okay. Uh, here's a picture of the gourmet uh, picnic. Looks it's, great. It's, it's very good. Uh, I will, you know... It mentioned any families with kids, there is a corn dog stand or, you know, get grab a hamburger somewhere else if you want. This is gourmet food. Uh, Christine and I are not foodies, but uh, they did have, as I mentioned, they had the candied salmon. It's kind of like a salmon jerky almost, but it was really good. The shrimp was there. good. I assume that's and this on, thing here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. And then on the yeah. left, you've got, you've got a chicken bow tie pasta yeah. Yeah. and a coleslaw. Well, I'm not going to um, end uh, on that picture, but that is our last picture. Yeah. I'll leave it here. Actually, I'll go back to your what I think is your best picture. There you go. There we go. All right. I like the star. Christine burst. actually, yeah, well, Christine told me not to take that picture. She didn't like it because it had the sun in it, and I kind of like uh, how yeah, the sun is. kind of neat. And this one's okay, so, too. Yeah. This one's pretty So that's Alaska. All right. Um, so let's... what's the details on that? We have sp We have spaces open, but what's the deal with the gaming? Uh, so the deal with the gaming, what we decided to do, we, the game room is only so big. It's about four, it's over a little over 4,000 square feet. I think we can probably get 40 tables or so in there. I haven't laid it out exactly, but somewhere between 40, 50 tables. Um, and we didn't want to sell anybody an experience that they couldn't take advantage of. So we, we have limited badges into the game room at a specific number. And for the first week of the cruise, those have sold out. For the second week of the cruise, there's still about 60 or so left, 50 or 60 left. Beyond that, we have more cabins that we can make available. We can make the group bigger, but we want to make sure you know what you're getting into. So on the first week, if you still want to come and be a part of this, there are lots of benefits. We have uh, a couple of cocktail hours, you know, social events that are going to be part of the group. We have onboard uh, $100 per cabin onboard shipboard credit to spend. There is overflow gaming. So on those three days that all we're doing is sailing at sea where there's, we're not getting off the boat in the dining room, we have some table space to play games. So if there's not enough room, if the badges have sold out for the game room itself, you can get, if you're just part of our group, you're welcome to come to the cocktail hours. You're welcome to play games in the dining areas uh on those three days so you can work. come to the you can come to the event center or it's called like a conference room conference center the, the conference center take yes. a game and go play it in that in the dining room right if or you buy other places if buy, yeah if you buy a library card, library card basically is what we're calling it yeah. so a badge lets you come into the dedicated gaming room 24 7 and have access to the library that's $150. For no money extra, you can be part of our group and get all the benefits. You can't come into the room itself, but you can go into our overflow gaming space um, and be part of the group. Now, at least one of your party should also buy a library card for $50 
so that you can come down into the game room, check a game out, go up and play it somewhere else on the ship. Go and play it in the overflow gaming area. Go and play in the – the ship has a library reading room that actually has pretty good uh, – you know, probably two or three foot square tables, you know, card size tables. You can play a game up there. You, you can play a game anywhere else on the ship. You're a guest of the ship. And, you know, it, you have as much right to a table as anybody else, but it's not dedicated just to the Board Game Geek group. So there's three levels of being part of our group. Um, so check out the it, page for all the details. Check out the page that's linked uh, on here in the in the stream or in the chat. And it explains everything. It's kind of confusing because it's the first time we've ever done it this way. In the past... All you had to do was buy a cabin from us, and you're part of the group. But since we had to, we have to limit cabins separately than space or room in the game playing room. That's why there's a. It's an extra charge to buy a badge if you want one, or to buy a library card if you want one. But you do have to book your cabin through us to even be able to buy either of those other two things. You cannot just book the cruise through Royal Caribbean or through some other travel agents and buy just a badge from us that it, the That's economics important. of our group doesn't work. If, if people do it that way. Okay. Now, or second week you said had how many open full the, with the access to the room? Uh, uh let me check like here. Or yeah. Check? Second week right now has, um, let's see. That's first week. First week I've got, 50 cabins left, but no badges. It's all library cards. Right. Second week, I've got about, eh, so there's about 60 badges left. Although some people haven't bought theirs yet. So let's call it 50 badges left. Right. And uh, there's about 20 cabins. We, um, we have one balcony left. We've got uh, about 10 ocean views. We don't have any interiors, and we've got some junior suites on the second week. So it's almost sold out. We've only got 18 cabins left to sell on the second week. Okay. So on that one, it's likely that cabins will sell out before badges. So there will be plenty of room in the, in the game room there. But we have more cabins to sell on the first week. Gotcha. Okay. Um, if you have any questions in the chat, throw them in there, and we'll hang it. Out for a second before we move on to BGGCon 2017 and 2018. Okay. So the cruising is pretty fun. I mean, it's um, the, the week sounds like a long time, but uh, it will be over before you know it. It is quite the time accelerator. Yes, yes. Um, I'm actually looking forward to doing two weeks back to back. Um, while we're uh, waiting for some questions here, let me just drop a few names. Or uh, are we allowed uh, to drop uh, names? We are. I have okay. been given permission to let people know that we have um, some special guests with us on this cruise. I well. I'm not going to drop every name because I don't have explicit permission for every name. I'm sure it won't be a problem. I just haven't asked them yet. So there are more people coming. And if I don't drop your name, it's because I can't remember that you've told me explicitly that you're coming and that I can tell people that you're coming. But uh, one of our special guests this year, back in March, was Stephen Bonacore from Stronghold Games. He is coming on the first week. Very excited about it. He's bringing a whole entourage of like uh, four or five cabins worth of people, of his friends that he's convinced to come drink beer with him on the cruise mm -hmm. and maybe play some games. Um, we have Alan Moon and his wife, uh, Janet, are going to be on both weeks of the cruise with us. Yep. They are they're sailing back to back, and uh, we're very excited for them to come. And... Uh, Going to have a good time there. There's several other publishers, designers um, that are coming as well. Um, it's it's not an event for exhibiting. There's no booth space. It's not a uh, there's no exhibit hall. It's just a fun time to play games and interact with each other. This is a yeah. social event. 
Right. You know, I will pro I may run a poker tournament if people want to. Um, usually, you know, we get a table or two that want to play some poker for fun. Um, we also we have, did uh, Lincoln and Nikki of uh, Game Night fame coming. They're yes, coming the first week. week They're one. coming on the first week. Yep. Uh, that should be fun. They will be there to super friendly. They'll talk yep. to whatever anybody. Um, John and Laney are coming as yep. they have on all the cruises. If you, they help us run all of these events, mm-hmm. and I think um, all four of our families—you, Aldi, yep. myself, John and Laney, and Nikki and. Lincoln have extended family coming on the cruise as well. Yep. To one degree or another. I'm bringing my boys and uh, probably my oldest daughter. uh, And my parents are hopefully, fingers crossed, they're coming. My brother Scott and his wife Julie are are hopefully coming. So it's just a – it's a fun, fun time to just interact with each other in a casual, low-key manner. Nobody's running around in a jersey. I tell explicitly everybody, don't bring your jerseys. Nobody's working hard on this one. However, I think we still provide a very good experience, and I do want to tell all the attendees, if you need any help or need anything, please let me know, and uh, we will make sure that you've, you've got what you need. All right, I have you been looking wrong. through the... I typed hey. it wrong. <laughs> oh, well. People can figure out there's a semicolon there. I typed the tw- Twitter link wrong. Anyway. Oh, so our Twitter link? Yep. Twitch link was wrong? Uh-oh. Yep. Okay. Seems like some people figured it out. Yeah, at least 27 okay. of them, apparently. So, um, that's BGGCon and... Or, sorry, BGG Spring and BGG at Sea. So, have Do you been looking through the questions in the... I don't the, see any uh, don't see any questions. Uh, let's see. I can't come in 2018. What's the best way to be informed or updated when 2019 or 2020, et cetera, comes available? Um, we have a the best. List. We we have a mailing list, or uh, if you're a board game geek user, subscribe to me or subscribe to the BGG at C forum. Uh, and you'll get any announcements made that way. We have forums set up for all three events, BGG Con, BGG Spring, and BGG at Sea. And I make all the postings in those forums. When you subscribe there, you will, uh, you'll be notified through Geek Mail or through email, whatever your subscription settings are. If you don't know what subscribing is... Um, yeah, you can... If you go to read the forum, about if you go to the if you just go bra- if you go forums forums here, yeah, you um, can just click the subscribe link you can right click, there. There's a subscribe link to all the different conventions, but we also have mailing lists and stuff you can sign up for. Okay, uh, Jeremy Rhodes asks, "Will Alan be telling jokes?" Uh, I hope so. Alan Moon, probably. He's funny. He is a very funny guy. Uh, he's a lot of fun. So. Um, Please email me, follows up, will the announcement come in the weekly newsletter? Almost certainly. Uh, the Geek Weekly will include the announcement when it's made uh, for future, we, whenever we, the... We announce roll. BGGCon registration when it will happen and when it will go live so that you yes. can be prepared. It sold out in 59 minutes this year. Something, 50-something minutes. A BGG con, the November con, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was 54, 56 minutes, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, um, 2017 BGG con, how's that looking? Uh, that's looking awesome, of course. We're making, uh, we're furiously making preparations for that. Uh, I've just about got a finalized exhibitor list. And have that posted very soon. Um, we've it's in many ways it's going to be a lot like it was last year. I don't know of any real major, major changes yeah. other than something that won't really impact many people, just a small subset of people. For the first time this year, we sold premium badges, right. um, and that was. Simply an opportunity to uh, guarantee getting a badge before they sold out. And they will have a slightly easier experience getting into the convention. They have a separate line to get to pick up their badge. But once the convention's up and running, uh, every attendee is like every other attendee. We're happy to have you there and have access to all the same things. 
Yeah, and if so you want to go check the out the, uh, the games that we're going to work on, probably look at the Essence Spiel preview um, and sort it by... Um, I'll just load it up here real quick and show you. So we're going to use this to try to gauge. Make sure that we have enough of these games. We go to... Oh, um, uh, you, you need to switch scenes, Alda. You're not showing the... Let me show my... my uh, you're not showing the browser right now. All right, good call. So I went to Spiel 17 Preview from the front page. There's a big bo banner for it. Um, and then I sort by stats, and I sort, I'm sorting by must-have. So must-have is what people are really um, looking forward to. Uh, I don't think I sorted it right. Hold on. Uh, community stats. Okay. Well, the numbers are way lower than I thought they would be. Some some of you guys need to go and put in your numbers. <laughs> so let me sort by thumbs instead. Well, that doesn't give me a lot of information. So, okay. We need some work, people. We need some thumbs. Yep. Here. Please. <laughs> yeah, get excited. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, you need to tell us what we're looking for. And I. Oh, you know what? I think I'm looking at my subscriptions. Hold the hold the horses. Yeah, that was my subscriptions. That's why I'm like these numbers seem very low. Because <laughs> you're not subscribed was, to many games. Well, I was just showing the new the new items. You have to kind of like. Yeah. Up. Okay, let's go back to uh, community stats. Must have. Okay, yeah, that looks different. <clears throat> <laughs> there you go. Terraforming Mars, Venus. Yeah. Project Clans of Caledonia. So these will be all the games that uh, we'll be sure to get for BGG Con. Photosynthesis. We already have photosynthesis, but we need more of that. Charterstone. Yeah. Queen Domino. Yeah, okay. So this is kind of gauging what we're making sure that we're going to have. Obviously, we get hundreds, if not thousands, more games um, than what's on this list. Or what what's on yep. the top list. So Anyway, yep. So Essen this year, Spiel Fair in Essen, comes near the very end of October, and BGG Con, because of where Thanksgiving falls, f comes near the very middle of October, or November. November yeah. There's very little time in between the two, so uh, we're, we're preparing as much as we can before we all head over to Germany, and then uh, BGG Con itself is going to be right after. So it's... it's, uh, it's Fast approaching. Yeah. Okay. I don't. We don't have really a lot to add for that since it's sold out. But twenty eighteen. No. Oh, there is one question here about twenty seventeen. I'll just okay. address it real quick. Jeremy Rhodes asks, "Were you upset at all that Pax Unplugged chose the same weekend?" Um. Minorly. Minorly, I'll. We'll be didn't, honest. Didn't we talk were... to us at all. Didn't contact us at all. So yeah. Maybe. Maybe yeah. I'm more upset than anything. Because it kind of puts I'm, a lot of people in a, in a weird position. Yeah, it, I don't think it hurt us attendee-wise very much. Um, it's a very different kind of a show. Yeah, uh, completely It different. did hurt the exhibitors. It, it the, yeah. the, the I exhibitors felt worse. Going, yeah, yeah that, I, the, I felt the worst for the exhibitors who had to choose between the two or figure out a way to attend both. Um, we had heard that PAX Unplugged was going to happen, but we didn't know it was going to be that weekend. And it, it caught us off guard, but, you know, we're going to do our thing and, and they'll do their thing and, and good for them. And we'll just keep doing our thing. Yep. Cool. Moving on. 2018. We're still in the same hotel. Still at the same capacity. Yes. 2018. Nothing much is going to change between 2016 to 2017 and 2017 to 2018. Uh, we will pro we will do the premium badges again next year, uh, probably the same number of them, and it will sell out uh, very quickly. We expect because uh, we're contracted for the same space. We don't go to the bigger space until 2019. So there's not much different to say about 2018 other than. Um, it's going to be great, and uh, more of the same. It'll be yep. if more, you, more if of the same. If you think that BGG Con is a good convention, it will be the same good convention. I think it's great convention. Yep. I have no bias against that. No bias at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then 2019, I guess we'll just talk about that since that's – then we'll wrap it up here, I think, unless you can think of sure. any other last things. Um, yeah. We're moving back to Dallas. 
I mean, we're back technically to downtown in Dallas. Dallas. When, I, when you say Dallas, Dallas is like a big kind of name, but we're technically in Grapevine, if you want to be yeah. technical the about first it. Two, the first two years of BGGCon were in Dallas, then we went to Irving, then we went to Grapevine, now we're going back to Dallas. Uh, the Hyatt Regency Dallas, if you're familiar with the Dallas skyline, it is the Reunion Tower, the great big ball on a top of a column. Um, the, there's many attractions with this place, many nice things about it. It is connected with Union Station, light rail. Um, so getting from the airport on the light rail will be easy. Getting up into other parts of Dallas will be easy. Uh, it is walkable from a lot of uh, historical areas. If Dealey Plaza is something that interests you or the Sixth Floor Museum where uh jfk yeah, uh, kennedy was shot yeah. you know everybody should know it's about right that right across the street right across, like, the street. across the street it's it's two three i don't know what four or five blocks from um no, yeah. deep ellum or no deep. not deep ellum west end west end west end yeah so there's lots of bars and and food areas over there just just a yeah, lot of a lot of neat deep ellum for food deep, f- deep ellum's turned into like sort of a mini foodie place in in dallas so but that's yeah. probably um, a car ride away. Probably a car I don't ride. I don't know if it's that easy to get to walking. I don't think it is. What about light rail? Does it go up that way? No. Okay. Well, Uber is all over the place. You Lyft, Uber. Quick Uber over there. Taxis. Lyft, whatever. Yeah. Uber is big in Dallas. Lyft is big in Dallas. So would be a couple all right. bucks to uh, drive over there. Question with a group. in the chat. Do you know how much parking will be for 2019 at the new hotel? Uh, yes. It will be, I believe, should I look it up or should I guess? Because I have it in a contract look here. Look it up. All right, fill time. Let's see if I'm right. If you're parking locally, you might want to, if you don't want to deal with downtown parking, you could probably go like to another parking place and ride, park and ride. Is that true? With yes. the light rail? Like you could park at White Rock or you park you could yeah, and you could light rail in from a park, park and ride. If you're in Plano. There's a uh, a valet parking at the hotel, but there are also self parking lots right next to the hotel. If you know what downtown city parking is, you'll be very pleased to hear that if you self park, it is discounted to five dollars per day. So it's not free. We're used to free parking out at the airport, but it's downtown. Validated but it's only parking, gonna... Jeff. Yeah, validated parking. Sorry. Well, you corrected me. I'll correct it back. We are used to validated parking at the hotel or at the airport. Downtown parking at the new place will only be five dollars a day if you self park. Right. If you so if you're valet... from Houston, park at the hotel and like maybe leave it with them. What's the yeah. valet cost? The valet is kind of high, right? Valet, I, if I remember right, it's either twenty or thirty. Yeah, that's probably, for the valet. I, I don't remember for sure. You know, check it out, but it's it was significantly more than that. Yeah, All we're right. excited about that new hotel and uh, what what new exciting challenges and experiences that will come from that. Well, I can talk about a couple of things. One thing, um, it's gonna we're gonna have at least the opportunity for a much bigger exhibitor hall. We're very limited on exhibitor space. And I specifically, some people may wonder why our booths are only, you know, 10 by 10, 10 by 20. That's something we've chosen to limit over the years to get more exhibitors in without it being a large, you know, you go to Gen Con and, and you got somebody taking up a lot more space. We have have a, a hotel convention. Those are, Convention center conventions, which exactly. like arc lights and hard floors, knock yourself out. Yeah, <laughs> but our, I prefer our, the hotels. The hotel we prefer the carpeted. Myself. We prefer the the large, the high ceiling, the ballroom feel. And this new hotel is just more of the same. It's about fifty percent bigger in every way. The main ballroom is fifty percent again bigger than what we currently have. The exhibit space is. Fifty percent again bigger than what we have right now between the two spaces in all one room, and uh, it's it's very nice, uh, very very nice hotel. Yeah, we have a lot of more kind of ideas that um, would come with that space 
which I think we need we need to talk about between ourselves yeah. first before we announce them. But some ideas, some interesting ideas. Sure. Jeremy Rhodes is asking, do you know what the food situation is like at the hotel? Will they do a concession stand like they do at the current one? Uh, food situation is very similar. They have one or two restaurants and a bar area, yeah. a breakfast buffet. They do have access to uh, Wolfgang Puck 560, which is the restaurant that rotates. It's a fabulous up restaurant. If you can, oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Make, get in there. I mean, it's pricey. anyone can get in there. It's just if you want to pay. It's pricey, pricey, but it rotates. It's one of these moving restaurants that rotates around up on top of the tower. Yeah, it's really cool because you get to see all downtown. Um, but the really hotel sense. has, um, they are also going to do the cash sale option that we've been doing now. Well, they were set up a little kiosk down in, by the gaming area and, uh, and do that. And they've got a 24-7 coffee shop as well. So right. it, Inside the hotel is very similar, and outside the hotel is all much easier to get to because you're not inside the airport. Okay. Is, uh, BGG Spring remaining at the DFW airport for the foreseeable future? DFW Hyatt Airport. Yeah. It uh, is for the time being. In fact, we just signed contracts to stay there for 2019 and 2020. Um, so we like that space and, uh, we, the, the new space would probably be too big for BGG spring. As long as BGG spring still fits at the hotel, we're happy there. Um, so for the foreseeable future, at least the contracts we've signed for right now, we are still at the, uh, DFW airport Hyatt Regency. Ideally, what is the largest you could see bgg con growing to attendance was one million people <laughs> <laughs> what i've been saying most recently at least for the last couple of years at least this is my opinion this isn't all these opinion but i think we're on the same page we like the feel of this convention in that it is a hotel ballroom kind of convention and as long as there are hotel ballrooms big enough we will let it grow to that point um Hyatt it's, Regency. Ne it's never going to be Gen Con. It's never going to be yeah. Origins. Never going to be those kind of conventions. It's like it's completely never, different. We have a different yeah. product. Um, if you've been and compared the two, you know they're night and day, completely different. So, yeah, it's where not, we we're are not copying Gen Con, we're not copying Origins. Yeah, and 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 we don't want to be. We want to put on a different yeah. kind of experience. They're great at what they do, and we want to be great at what we do. Um, at the Hyatt Regency Dallas, I have not done my floor we plan it yes. out. yeah i haven't projected it will be bigger it. than bggcon dfw hyatt yeah it's, it's it's just a bigger twice the space almost it could space. get to the point where it's four to five thousand people maybe more than that i, I don't yeah, know that's not what in 2019 we will not blow the doors off this thing it's not that no way. we don't when we went as big as possible yeah. we want it to be comfortable we want to grow intelligently when we went from the Weston to the Hyatt DFW airport, we could have tripled one year to the next if we wanted to, but we said, no, we're only going to let it grow That's by unwise. a certain. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, we just, we like to learn from every year and apply it to the next year. And we don't want to change too many variables. So it will continue to grow. We've had consistently, when we've been able to, we've grown 10, 10 to 20% year over year. There have been years where we've been limited, and so yeah. demand has been pent up. And so the two years later, when it's been released, we grew a lot more because there was a year or two without growth. But uh, we're, we're very happy and very excited about, about the new space. We're, we're actually very happy with the Hyatt brand. They have treated us very well, and and the people we work with have been great to work with. So we're excited about that too. All right. One more minute for questions. Maybe to cut, maybe two more minutes and then we'll call it yep. a day. Four o'clock. Four oh nine. So Four I have a question for you, Aldi, while we're waiting for questions. Oh no. Back in 2004, 2005, when you were thinking about doing your very first, did you ever see it getting to this point? No. 
we just wanted to hang out with some people from the website. Yeah. And that's what it was. It was basically, what was it, 300, 200, no, 250 something? 220 people was 220? the first year. 220? Yep. That, that's my recollection. That's, uh, and, and we filled that whole place. Yeah. The space we had, we completely filled it. Felt very crowded. There's pictures out there somewhere. BGGCon 2005 yes. or six. Yeah, I think our library was a thousand games back then. It was if my that, collection, right? basically. It was, yeah, we just yeah. boxed up my collection and tubbed it up and put it in, in a U-Haul and drove it down. Yep. I remember breaking the door of the the U-Haul and being very worried about that because like, <laughs> you know those door handles are like real yep. kind of garbage. All right, we got a question coming in from Jeremy Rhodes. How much do you spend in reinvesting into the library, especially if you anticipate even more growth in the coming years? Do you ever seek out games that are still in print but a few years old? Um, um, if you consider going to Essen with a crew of 12 people reinvesting in the library to build the library? Yeah, well, so and... That's a lot of money. It's um, a lot of money to So a lot of Essen. games get donated to us, and that helps out a lot. But we do spend a lot going to conventions and covering them. So it's kind of a an investment into the, the industry as a whole, like giving exposure to those who probably might not have the exposure for their games. Yeah. Right. We, when we yep. go to, when we go to spiel as in, we set up our live streaming booth and we do it for five days for t- 10 to seven each day. So what is that? Nine hours a day. So we're doing nine hours a day of live streaming for five days, so about 45 hours, 40 to 45 hours of live streaming. That's uh, kind of a lot of money. And yeah. so that's kind of an investment. Now, the games that are brought to us to demo are donated to the library. And we bring all that back at considerable expense to Air Freight. So, yes. We are um, also on some publishers' lists for you know review copies or library copies. It's common for publishers to... To donate in strategic manners. No, yeah. um, not year, everybody. Yeah, this year yeah, and the past, actually, the, games. yeah, the past two years we've run Hot Games Room at Gen Con, where the publishers have donated games to that. Those games come back on a truck to BGG Library as well. So yep. the library grows pretty much about a thousand games a year, which means we and have we to remove do. about a thousand games a year. Yes, and that's um, math that if you know how many a thousand games is. I'll say it's about five or six minivans worth. <laughs> it's a lot. The problem. It's not really a problem. We're basically having to deal with this issue. Yeah. Well, and, and to answer Jeremy's last question, yes, we do sometimes have to seek out one-off games yeah. to, you know, we've got an expansion with no base game or the base game has lost pieces. We will reach out to the publishers to get a replacement copy. Or in some cases we purchase copies to make sure we have enough of the right game. Yeah. Uh, just recently, Laney has been doing a lot of analysis on our library stats to make sure we've got the right stock um, and in of games available. It's it's never perfect. We're not going to be able to have 800 copies of Sulkin ready because everybody wants to play that game the first thing when they get to BGGCon. Because then, what do we do with 800 copies of Sulkin three days later? Uh, just to pick a an arcane yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, it depends on ago. the size and popularity of a game, but we might we'll bump up the quantities. Like I think we had six or seven terraforming Mars at, at spring this year. Yeah. So yeah, if you wanted we... to play your terraforming Mars, I got a hair in my my face. I can't get it out. Okay, there it is. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, this hair. So um, it's six or seven copies of a game is not unheard of. Yeah, really popular things, but that's probably the max it will be. I think last we fall just, we had we two cases of code many. names. Yeah, we just can't have that. Many. Yeah. How important is it finding games that are underrepresented in the library? Not sure I understand that. Underrepresented would mean like one copy. One or, copy, well, not I mean, being we enough. We've taken out thousands of games out of this library that no one really ever played, which is yeah. sad. Sad. We, 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 we look at the stats. stats. Yeah, we have stats yeah. for every year. We so. have the checkouts. We have the checkouts, and we you know put things in storage. Uh, there are things that I wouldn't let Aldi get rid of, and there are things he won't let me get rid of. Even though nobody uh, plays it. Even though nobody neither, plays it. Neither them. one. And, nobody plays either <laughs> one. Yep. And, uh, and they're in storage, or you know they're still in the library, and, and uh, maybe someday I'll put up my... 
bounties in a geek list or something saying, please, somebody go check this game out just so I, I can just... I think you should hide messages in the games that you want people to play, and if they find it, they would get a reward. We have actually done things... I think things... Mike has done that, actually. Have you, Mike? Mike think... is actually in the chat. I can see him typing. Um, have been I think done that's that Mike. Yeah. Um, poor types of games. I mean, look, we want the best library in the world, and I think we have it right now. Um... And we want to keep it going. Like that is like my obsession to get the library games to be the best it can be. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that really sets apart BGG events and, and BGG con specifically is the library and having quick access to the Essen games. Yeah. yeah believe me. It's um, it started with bringing home a hundred games and, a, and a, Oh, I'm going <laughs> to, Rip my hair out. Um, it started with about a hundred games in a suitcase where we cut the corners to lay everything flat. I don't know if to make them fit. That day, we had I to was there. Together. Yeah. It was two thousand six. To now. Two thousand six. I taped those boxes back. Now together. we're bringing home f four pallets of games. Yep. Which is probably twelve hundred games around. Yeah. There. Maybe a couple hundred per pallet or two hundred per pallet, three hundred per pallet. Oh my god. All right, any last questions? We have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, let's see, we'll turn spring on, what do you think, Thursday maybe? Ooh. Yeah, well, this, get, this week is actually, actually pretty tight for me, so we'll have to get it. Um, okay. I'll take a look at the code and I can yeah, probably Yeah, either get... Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. Yeah. We have a uh, the the uh, the work is already happening on getting ready for the convention. Yeah, we're, I'm actually coming. coming to, I'm coming down there tomorrow, right? Or no, Wednesday to uh, Wednesday. start, and then this weekend yep. we're actually doing a this library weekend. party. So, um, is that a public library? No, it's this, a private. The, this one is small group. A small group. Yeah. October 21st and November 11th will be our large group, more open invites. So if you're in the Dallas area and you're not already on the BGG Con volunteers Google group and want to come out to the compound and help us get games ready for the library, the uh, shoot me a <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The, the bunker. BGG compound. Shoot, uh, shoot me an email, Jeff at boardgamegeek dot com, and uh, yeah, and those and those parties are pretty fun. I hope. <laughs> I think um, they're fun. They're we 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 have game, we, we, work, we have games. We work for a few afternoon. hours, and then we and then, and, we, and by work we mean punch games, punch games, punch games, bag, and bag, bag pieces, things and put them in a the computer. Yep, and put and them then back on we the have we have a dinner catered, and then we play games all evening yeah, long. Whatever you want to play all night to, till Jeff can. Jeff stays up pretty late. He's, I think he stays up later than I do at these. So. Uh, yeah, I usually do keep it going as late as people are there, depending on how early my meetings are the next day. Right. All right. Any think of any last things? I think that's it. I think I'm that's sure we'll probably think of five things after we stop. But well, I think you know, an we're hour and fifteen minutes. We're probably. I am probably certainly very uh, approachable. Send me an email. Send me a geek mail. Post in any of the BGG event forums. I am subscribed to all three, and I read everything that is in there, and I try to respond to to everything that needs it. So, any questions, um, please uh, let me know. Yeah, these forums are. Um, there's so many of them, but um, BGG Con is probably the main one to post. BGG Con is the Obviously main. You can you can post in any of them. Um, BGG Spring and BGG at Sea. Right, and there's a lot of pinned things here, so um, we can. Uh, th there may be a lot of. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a few things. But there's probably things we up. need to unpin. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, but there's a lot of questions that have been answered already. I know our search engine's not the best, but uh, give it a try before you ask the question. But then just ask the question, even if it's been asked before, we'll answer it. Yep. We'll try to, or someone else will. Usually, like. The Usually somebody else right gets to it and get to it yeah. before we do. Somebody else will get to it before I do, and then I'll just give them a thumb or give them a little geek gold for doing my job for me. Okay, well, uh, thanks everybody for watching. This will be we're going to try to get this up on YouTube later. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you don't understand what that means. But uh, we'll see you at. Um, I guess the next time we'll see you 
Speed GG Con. Or Essen. Or so, Essen. So we are setting up a booth at Essen, so if you want to come say hello. Um, What's your booth number? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It'll be posted. Head, so I don't... We're in Hall 6. Same place six, as last year? Six, six. Yeah, and um, you'll find us. Yep. You'll find us. We'll be there. All right. Take care. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Bye, everybody.